Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come and we are here. 22514 has arrived, and as you can tell, no, it is not a fucking marble. No, it isn't. It looks like a marble, but it is the world. And if you look very, very closely at it, right here at the very bottom of it, it says, dedicated to all the men and women who have served in the global war on terrorism. And this is this is very awesome to look at. I've never seen this. This is actually the first time I've actually seen this. Now, I've been in Corpus for a long time, but I never thought I would see anything like this. But it is cool, especially when it's a tribute to our men and women who have served our armed forces. But man, I tell you, this is awesome, but not as awesome as this. We are here. We have arrived. We're here in Corpus Christi, Texas. My city, of course. Look all around you. Everything. All the boats all set up over here. This is where downtown Corpus Christi is at. I've been downtown Corpus Christi many, many times before. The restaurants are great. The bars are awesome. The places here are the fucking shit. I tell you that right now. And here, somewhere around, if you can focus this way, right over here around this area, further around, there used to be a place called the Memorial Coliseum a long time ago. That place used to have some of the greatest wrestling in the history of professional wrestling. Hulk Hogan had played in the Memorial Coliseum. Ric Flair, the Clash of Champions back in 1990, that took place over there at the Memorial Coliseum. Now, personally to me, my thought on the Memorial Coliseum being torn down is like this. Whoever did that needs to be taken out back and shot at the fucking head for crying out loud, okay? I know it's wrong for me to say those things, but orderly, what do you want me to say? What? Keep the Memorial Coliseum and preserve everything and its rich heritage hitch history? Of course, that's the way it goes. But nonetheless, guys, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the premiere. The third season has arrived. The main event talk is here. And you know who I am. I am the main event player, the Super C, the God among gods, the King among kings, the coolest son of a motherfucking bitch. Walking God's green earth with another great episode. I said it's coming and it's here. And the road to WrestleMania now begins, okay? Everything. We're going to talk a lot, including the biggest screw job in Raw Rumble history, the Elimination Chamber, the ridiculous Hall of Fame. Why does this individual have to be in the Hall of Fame? And also, the injury of John Cena. And uh, a lot of people are talking about that as well. We're going to discuss that as well. Also, Daniel Bryan and the whole thing with Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. I can't wait to talk about that. And also the whole thing with Lockdown, TNA Wrestling, MVP. He's got his team set up. Dixie Carter's got his team set up. Can't wait for that. But a big shout out to all the members of the Main Event Posse and Headbang Incorporated that are watching this right now. Also, I want to say congratulations go out to my good friend Mondo who got engaged believe it or not oh yeah congratulations to you mondo most of you guys know him as a former member of the periwinkle massacre shy one one of my good friends congratulations go out to him and his wife and well his fiance and everything else like that i wish nothing but the best for you guys and i hope everything turns out and let me know when the wedding happens so that way the main event can be there for that oh man and also big shout out to all the members of my team headbanger incorporated eddie maiden hector Juarez, home star runner the best drummer on the planet john luna ravishing rodney and the sexy assassin himself richard and we are all prepared and we're all ready for wrestlemania the road to wrestlemania begins let's go ahead and get right into it i'm going to go ahead and just talk about the hall of fame induction ceremony because as you guys know there are three individuals that are already been inducted into the hall of fame one is the ultimate warrior the other is lita and the other is jake the snake roberts now before i get into the ultimate warrior and lita i want to talk about jake the snake roberts because as you guys know Jake the Snake Roberts, uh, if you guys read it on Facebook, if you guys read it on Twitter, he did suffer, uh, I believe, cancer. Uh, cancer, I believe it was right behind the knee, the size of a, a half dollar, if I remember that correctly. And uh, my, my thoughts and my prayers go out to Jake the Snake Roberts, and I hope he shows up over at the WWE Hall of Fame. He says that nothing is going to stop him 
from being over at the Hall of Fame, and I hope he does show up because he's an individual that I truly feel deserves to be in the Hall of Fame a whole lot. Lita deserves to be in the Hall of Fame as much as anybody. But the one person, well, before I get to the Ultimate Warrior, let me discuss Jake Roberts. Why? Because the fact that he created the DDT and the, and the fact that he created some of these most sinister promos, when he talked, everyone listened. I mean, he wasn't just being a guy that would just say something and it just comes out of nowhere. He says what's in here and what's in here and everything else like that. He gives you the reality of this world. That was so cool about Jake the Snake Roberts. And also the fact, not just about, you know, if any of you guys have seen his DVD, Pick Your Poison, you know about his drug abuse, you know about you know everything from his alcohol days and everything. I'm glad that Jake Roberts is a whole lot better now. I'm, I, I'm really sorry the fact that he had cancer, but nonetheless, that's the kind of survivor that Jake the Snake Roberts is. And I'm glad that he is inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, Lita. To me, a woman that truly deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, uh, not just Trish Stratus because she was inducted just last year. Lita, very innovative, very different from every diva I've ever seen, very attractive, very hot, kind of reminds me of my friend Roxanne in some way. Uh, Lita, when I first heard about her, she was in Extreme Championship Wrestling a long time ago and then came into the WWE with a guy named um, Del Rio or El Torito or whatever whatever the redheaded guy name, name was. And then, of course, she was a part of Team Extreme with Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, the Hardy Boys, a long time ago. And then, of course, she's been in many great Diva matches, including with Trish Stratus. And those were some of the most innovative matches that I've ever seen, especially with her and Trish Stratus. Every time I see those two in the ring, they weren't just two beautiful, gorgeous Divas. They went out and kicked ass. They did everything they could and more. Put her body on the line every single time. And Lita, to me, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame no matter what anybody says, okay? And I hope, I hope personally, that Trish is the one that inducts her into the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Now, I'm going to save the Ultimate Warrior because let me explain something about the Ultimate Warrior. Now, as a kid, I dig the rope shake. I dig the tassels on his arm. I dig the fact that he comes out and starts talking like crazy. Talking about the lords and the gods and the all masters of the fucking heavens and shit. And every time the warrior did a promo, nobody knew what the fuck he said. But as kids, back in the 80s, or the late 80s to be exact, that was a good thing. We didn't give a damn about what the hell he said as long as, long as he came out there and kicked some fucking ass. That's exactly what the Ultimate Warrior did. He had great matches with the Honky Tonk Man. He had great matches with Ravishing Rick Rude, Andre the Giant. And then his most greatest accomplishment was when the Ultimate Warrior went one-on-one -on -one against Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6, Sky Dome in Toronto, Canada, April 1st, 1990. That was the whole turning point for the Ultimate Warrior. His career elevated into something that nobody ever saw. But how is it that Hulk Hogan was the only person that knew that the Ultimate Warrior's career was going to be up and then be down after that? You guys know what I'm talking about. If you guys have seen the DVD, The Self-Destruction of the Ultimate Warrior, you have an idea. Why did the Ultimate Warrior decide to put a gun, and not an actual gun, but a gun over Vince's head? About how... He's not going to show up at SummerSlam until he gets this much money and gets fired for it after that. How crazy is that? Then returns at WrestleMania 8 after Hulk Hogan was going to supposedly retire from the business. Ultimate Warrior comes back, does a good promo, cut his hair and all that other shit, and then... There was some sort of a crazy drug policy. The Ultimate Warrior violated the drug policy, and then that was it. And then the Ultimate Warrior wanted to change his name into the Ultimate Warrior. I guess he figured he can hold the title of the Warrior to him. And then his return in 1996 didn't last so long. I mean, the last time that I saw the Ultimate Warrior was when he was at the King of the Ring, and he was alongside with 
then WWE Champion Shawn Michaels, and Ahmed Johnson. Those three made an opposing presence. And I thought I was going to be able to see him at an event called WWE International Incident. That was a pay-per-view that was done a long time ago. But due to some non-in-ring appearances, the Ultimate Warrior refused to show up at any WWE event. So there was a little bit of a contractual obligations and all this other stuff. And that led to the Ultimate Warrior not being around anymore. And that was it. He was done. He was finished. So the question is, despite the fact that all that shit happened, does the Ultimate Warrior deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? You want to know my answer? The answer is actually yes. Let me tell you why it's yes. Ric Flair, the 16-time world champion, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. The heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, Mr. WrestleMania, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Stone Cold Steve Austin deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. All of those superstars that I mentioned were innovative, were creative, have changed the business. The Ultimate Warrior, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame because he's a marketing tool. He's a marketing tool. I mean, how is it? How do you compare the Ultimate Warrior to all of these other great athletes that made a difference in the business? Ric Flair, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Hell, he, he even criticized about the Ultimate Warrior. Hulk Hogan, he even loves the Ultimate Warrior, but how is it that the Warrior has talked shit about Hulk Hogan? And all this stuff about the Ultimate Warrior talking shit about Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, you heard about that, right? Some of you guys have, some of you guys haven't. But one thing's for certain. Regardless of what anybody thinks, the Ultimate Warrior, he's inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. There's nothing anybody can do about it. And all I know is, does he deserve to be in it? Sort of. Should he be in it? Not really. But it's been done. There's nothing anybody can do about it. And all I can tell you is that I'm very curious about how the Ultimate Warriors... Hall of Fame induction ceremony is going to begin. What the hell is he going to say? You know, you remember how he used to come out on TV and start talking like he's a god or something like that. And, you know, saying like he's going to be out of control. And when, when the rockets launch and it sucks up my ass and then comes all the way in, then yeah, I will survive. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We'll see what happens at this coming Hall of Fame April 5th, the night before WrestleMania. And you know what, guys? You guys know that, well, you've heard about the WWE Network, right? The main event does not have his yet. I'll set up mine very, very soon. I already figured out what I need to do and everything else like that. But it was a huge launching pad for the WWE. Imagine to get any pay-per-view you want for $9.99 to see all of not just WrestleMania, but all the other pay-per-views as well, and also to check out all the classic WCW, ECW, and any classic Raw or Nitro or SmackDown or anything you haven't seen, plus the Legends House, um, WrestleMania Rewind, the Monday Night Wars with WCW and the WWE. The main event cannot wait to check all that out and so forth for only $9.95. Check out the WWE Network. I have it on my brand new iPhone 5S. That's what I have right now, right here with me and everything else like that. Check it out. It's way over the top. And let's talk about the Royal Rumble. The fact that, well, not all the Royal Rumble, just the, the part where everyone got screwed over. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of an inside scoop of what I think should have happened. Batista winning the Royal Rumble, he earned it, but he truly didn't deserve to win it. Who deserved to win it? Daniel Bryan. He deserved to win it. Now, let me give you my little insight about what I think happened. Do you remember when JBL was there doing the commentary and all of a sudden, all of a sudden the music hits and here comes JBL and he comes out of nowhere and he had no clue, mind you, no clue that he was gonna be in the Royal Rumble. What does that tell you? 
It tells you that, oh, obviously Daniel Bryan was supposed to be in the Royal Rumble, but apparently that didn't happen. So who wins it, Batista? 